everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Maloye in Abuja. Let's begin tonight with, well, the not so good news about the issue of corruption in Nigeria. Yet again, Nigeria has slipped in the rating uh, of the global initiative measuring on the issues of corrupt activities. Nigeria dropped one place in the 2021 Corruption Perceptions Index, CPI ranking released today by Transparency International. Nigeria scored 24 out of 100 points in the 2021 index, which was revealed uh, it is Nigeria's second consecutive year of a downward spiral on the Transparency International CPI ranking. The country's uh, score having dropped from 26 in 2019 uh, to 25 in the 2020 assessment and further to 24 in the latest 2021 record. Nigeria keeps its 149th position out of the 180 countries surveyed making it the second most corrupt country in West Africa. Take a listen to uh, the submission of the report. Shows clearly Nigeria is still battling with crisis of corruption, where Nigeria scored 24 out of 100 points in the 2021 Corruption Perception Index, paling back one point compared to 2020 Corruption Perception Index. In the country comparison for this year, Nigeria rank 154 out of 180 countries, five places down compared to 2022 Corruption Perception Index results. The index is completely impartial, objective, and globally acknowledged as the most widely used cross-country parameter for measuring corruption. The Corruption Perception Index result comes at a point when Nigeria, as a country, is battling with rising nationwide insecurity, higher unemployment, and damning revelation around public finance management. Well, that's the Transparency International report on Nigeria's Corruption Perception Index. Well, that takes us to getting you more stories on your political roundup. The challenges facing the justice sector must be resolved intentionally to engender confidence in the sector from both citizens and foreign investors. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, stated this while delivering his remarks at the 2022 Justice Sector Summit held in Abuja. Taking on issues facing the judiciary, the Vice President says the process of appointing judicial officers for the country is not rigorous enough. He called for better remuneration for judges to be at par with their counterparts in the legislature and ask the judiciary to be more transparent and give account of what the money is allocated to them have been used for. They must be well remunerated. The Ogun State Police Command says it has begun a massive manhunt for the arrest and prosecution of suspects who are allegedly responsible for the assassination of a traditional ruler and three others in a Wicker or local government area of the state. The State Police Command Public Relations Officer, Abimbola Oyeyemi, gave the assurance in Abelkuta, the state capital, while reacting to the ugly incident which has left the community deserted. While confirming that no arrest has been made so far, he however assured that perpetrators will be brought to justice, just as he warned against extrajudicial killings. It is not in the best interest of anybody for you to resort to safe aid. It doesn't pay. It's barbaric. And Governor Omar of Interior of Adamawa State has reiterated his commitment to ensuring that all residents of Adamawa State receive health care. The governor made this disclosure during the official unveiling of the formal sector health plan 
and the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund Plan in Yola, the Adamao State Capital. According to him, the initiative is part of the state government's commitment to ensuring that citizens access quality and affordable health care services. Let's get into our major topics of tonight and something that is uh, that are generating controversies, some of these stories that we're bringing to the floor tonight. The federal government is proposing to extend a period for the implementation of the removal of subsidy on premium motor spirit PMS, popularly known as Petro, by 18 months. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timmy Pestiva, announced this while briefing State House correspondent in Abuja. It says that the government has concluded plans to approach the National Assembly to amend the Petroleum Industry Act. Take a listen to him. That's why we are coming out to say, look, before the expiration of this time, this is what we intend to do. And if you listen carefully, I also mentioned to you that we, were, we engaged uh, the uh, legislat legislature. Or we believe that this, might, this will go to the legislature uh, to will apply for some amendment of the law so that we will still be within the law. We are proposing an 18-month ex extension but what the National Assembly is going to approve will be up to them. We will approve an 18-month extension. We will uh, uh, propose an 18-month ex extension. And then, of course, it's up to the National Assembly to, uh, to look at it and then uh, pass the amendment as they see fit. And you are all aware that steps are being taken for all refineries to be functional very soon. The Dangote refinery is expected to come on stream at the end of this year. All our refineries, the Potako refinery, is expected to be performing at a certain capacity, not full capacity, by end of this year. There are some modular refineries that are also going to come on stream later this year. You heard uh, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timmy Presiva, there. So th there is a thinking uh, in the minds of uh, the federal government, although uh, one will see that it's a clear uh, uh, shift from what the pre uh, federal government position has been a few months ago, especially towards the end of last year, and perhaps when the PIO was passed. Now, there seems to be a policy change. Uh, there are reasons for it. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Labour Congress has suspended its planned nationwide protest over the proposed removal of fuel subsidy. The Congress reached the decision after its National Executive Council meeting. According to the NSA President, Mr. Ayuba Waba, the decision was reached following the suspension of the proposal to stop the subsidy on petrol by the federal government. Take a listen to the NSA President. The neck after vigorous debate took a decision to suspend the planned nationwide process scheduled for 27th of January 2022 and the national protest also scheduled for 2nd of February 2022. The leadership of the Congress have communicated this organ decision to our civil society allies who have stood strategically behind us and behind Nigerian workers in our quest for social and economic justice for workers and the downtrodden people of our country. Going forward, we will continue to engage with government on the very critical issue of ensuring local refining of petroleum products, uh, creation of sustainable jobs, and affordable price of petroleum for Nigerians, and particularly Nigerian workers. Well, the case may have been different if uh, should the federal government had gone ahead to say it was going to um, remove subsidy on petrol because that will have had a dovetailing effect on the price of not only petrol but on commodities generally. Those are the positions of um, uh, experts. But hold that on one hand perhaps on your left um if you're right-handed uh, perhaps you uh, just just hold it because it's one of the issues that we will be discussing 
On the flip side, the National Assembly has re-amended the Electoral Act Amendment Bill to include provisions which clearly define the mode of primaries for political parties. Both chambers passed the harmonized version of the bill, which now includes direct, indirect, and consensus methods for political parties to nominate candidates for electoral position. Today's amendment to the Electoral Bill is done to harmonize the position of the Senate and House of Reps on consensus candidate. That was an introduction from the Senate. The House accepted it, and the bill is now ready to be transmitted to the President for his assent. Take a listen to the leaders of the two chambers of the National Assembly, Honorable Bajabia Mila and Senator Hamel Lawan. We have concluded on our task on the amendment to the Electoral Act number 6, 2010 bill. So we recall that the Senate and the House pass the Electoral Act amendment bill with slight difference. While the House passed the mode of primaries to be direct and indirect only, the Senate passed the mode of primaries to be direct, indirect, and consensus. What we have done is to give very clear and sufficient definition to each mode of primaries. The direct primaries is well defined and how it will be conducted. Ditto the indirect primaries. And for the consensus, the two chambers have produced in this bill now very clear definition of how a consensus candidate would emerge. I think the House and the Senate have decided to to uh, add, I believe, the consensus provision so that there will be no need for conference, but with certain provisos. And those provisos, hopefully, we'll be able to agree and insert them today to protect all aspirants for all positions so that we will ha all have an evil playing field. All right, then. House of Reps Speaker, Femba Jabi Amela, Senate President, Hamel Lawa. You now have a clarity on what is happening. I've had an opportunity to look at what that bill is based on the harmonization. Now the consensus is explained and what they're saying basically now from what they harmonize today is that if you do not agree on the consensus, every party in the consensus, uh, uh, on the consensus uh, table does not agree, if anyone does not agree, they have to go to direct or indirect primary as a party may decide. It does look like there's some explanation more based on what we had from the Senate. So let's get into it. So I, I told you, hold the issue of the subsidy on, one, on the left hand and perhaps hold this other one on the electoral bill on your right hand and let's put everything together. Let's get perspective to, to all of these issues. I'm being joined tonight by the SSA to the President and liaison to the National Assembly, Honorable El Yaqub, and the Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Mr. Debo Ologwagba. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank the president said, let, let's begin with the electoral bill, can we? I mean, all the subsidy. Let's begin with the subsidy. Um, yesterday, then an uh, NBA president said, this is probably a political decision. It might not be something that uh, is ec basically economic as, uh, issues. But is the government under pressure on this issue of subsidy and being pushed to make this decision as a reaction to what is possible that Nigerians will react to? Well, I believe the government is being responsible. It's a listening government. The Nigerians have spoken. 
and they have listened. And I'm sure you understand that policies and programs of government are all geared towards achieving an end. What is that end? Primarily to deliver service to the Nigerian people. And indeed, exigencies of every, any moment dictates what a government does. You've just mentioned the Electoral Act and the amendments that have been going, uh, that has just happened. And just like many other laws, when you set out, uh, just like the PIA envisaged that the subsidy could be removed in the first six months after the assent, and it's clear that other parameters had to be looked at, conditions have to be assessed uh, socially, economically, and um, in, in various aspects of our lives. And so, yes, the NLC has spoken, the Nigerian workers have spoken, Nigerians have spoken, and the government has looked inwards also to see that, hey, is it the right time to take out this subsidy? Uh, there are other conditions precedent that we should have actually attained before we think of removing it completely. And I'm sure from the explanation of the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum, you understand that certain expectations like uh, what would bring about cheaper um, energy to the country in terms of PMS and uh, other uh, uh, petrochemical derivatives is the refineries that will be coming on stream, that of the Dangote, mm -hmm. indeed the modular ones, as well as the refurbishment that's going on on the existing Nigerian So uh, he, he mentioned also that there will be an amendment to the, to the PIA to accommodate this new decision. That's going to be an executive uh, uh, proposition to the National Assembly, is it? Is that being prepared? Yes, uh, that's in the works. And certainly, like he said, we are going to make a proposal, but it is up to the National Assembly to accept that proposal of 18 months to increase or decrease that proposal. Because they are So there uh, are two things that will be done. You have to amend the law, then you also need to make a supplementary budget because it's, uh, in the budget of 2022, it's only captured between January and June. July is supposed to be another regime where we should not be paying subsidy. So yes. those are two things. Is the federal government working on that as we speak? Yes, the government is working on a supplementary budget as we speak. And I'm sure you also know that uh, when the president um, assented to the Appropriation Act 2022, he made mention of certain uh, things that he would like the National Assembly to look at in terms of, uh, you know, the b budget as passed by them as opposed to the one presented to them with a view to saying that, okay, it's a work in progress. We can certainly bring appropriation, I mean, supplementary appropriation or, in fact, environment so that we can move funds there's a possibility of an increment in the envelope, in the general budget envelope, uh, because with all of this, there's a speculation that the entire budget might increase from what the president had presented. But let me allow Mr. Logan, I mean, from the opposition point of view, what's your reaction on government's decision uh, to reverse its earlier stand on removal of uh, subsidy on petrol? Thank you, Sharon, and uh, Happy New Year. We haven't seen this yet. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's sad that Nigeria is at this crossroad with regards to this. Um, on the issue of petroleum subsidies, and I would think we should step back and go into the history. In 2011, candidate, then candidate, or aspirant, Buhari, made public statement as to the fact that subsidy payment is a fraud and that he would need someone to prove that to him, that if anybody says there's subsidy, that clearly that's a fraud. Which was being paid at the time by the PDP which, government. Which, which was being paid at that time, that time by the PDP government. Two things could come from that deduction or that statement. Either that the candidate then now, Mr. President, is unaware or he did not read at that time. Because subsequent event from 2015 up to now, from the records, shows an astronomical increase in the amount created for payment of subsidy. In any event, we talk about subsidy. The primary purpose of government the security and welfare of the people. And in any government all over the world, there are subsidy and there are cushioning effects that is embedded in the policy of government to help the most vulnerable 
in society. And I think when we talk about petroleum product, we must be talking about our peers. What are the OPEC members doing? Do they disregard their people, all in the name of economies that are not well thought through? Because you need people to be able to have an economy. I make reference to the United States, not to, I think the last quarter of last year, when the prices of petroleum product was going up, the president stepped in and released from the strategic reserves that brought down the prices for the pump. What does he do? He was targeted at the people. Now, if you look at the policy of this government, there have been, you can't be any clear policy direction on any issue. You take petroleum product, you take agri, you take the economy generally, there are no policy So, I mean, the reverser, is it an error on the side of government or what uh, does the PDP, what would the PDP would uh, love that the, the APC government, assuming you, uh, your, your party is in government, what would you have done differently? Yes, what we would have done differently, and which was what we did, was the fact that when you have a policy, you should think through it and seek expert advice. And I get back to the issue of the petroleum product. Now, the uh, head the Minister of State mentioned some modular, no specific, some modular refiners are coming up. When we talk about the issue of payment of subsidy and all the amount that is involved in it, why do we, how do we get here? First of all, you talk about the fact that all the three refineries are not working. When a Minister of State for Petroleum speak to Nigeria, what we expect is to have specific information for us. In his comment, he said, the Portaco refinery will come to some percentage of performance. Today, the capacity is between 20 and 25 percent. Kaduna refinery is comatose, it's practically dead. This president and the APC government promised in 2015 that the refineries will be up and be repaired and be refurbished and that new ones will be built. That's to tell you that when you put this government, the APC government to task, they make promises and they change it. As far, as, you, any, as, far as the PDP is concerned, they're, they're not, they're they're not, not happy what, with what... Because, I mean, NLC said they're not going to on, on strike again. Yes. Isn't that good news? At least momentarily. Absolutely good news for the Nigerian people, and we support that. In any event, we have said, this is the most unlikely time and the most unfair time to even consider the idea. All right. Just and we said that last but, year. Yeah. When we don't Let me allow uh, Honorable Ali Yacoub to react to what uh, the opposition had said tonight. <laughs> well, um, Sherwin, I, I believe, I'm glad you even mentioned the opposition is talking about um, refineries. How did we get here? How many years had PDP governed or ruled Nigeria? And what was the fate of those refineries? And when we talk about, uh, you know, subsidies and the fact of pro factors of production, the refineries had been comatose forever, literally under the PDP regime. In fact, I'm sure you, we all remember the scandal around the subsidy regime during the PDP government. Um, having said that, this government, as he mentioned earlier, about cushioning effects when you have policies that affect the livelihood of the Nigerians. It, it, I'm sure it has to be given the credit that we have done an unprecedented level of, um, you know, unprecedented level of, of, of impactment through the initiatives of social engagement and, uh, you know, mobilization. And in fact, even the agricultural sector that he's talking about, we can see that Nigerians have returned to the farms. They have just recently, we saw the rice pyramids in Abuja. In addition to so many government interventions in various aspects of the Nigerian life, Nigerians had been supported in small scale and medium enterprises. There are so many agencies of government settled with the responsibility. You, you, there are so numerous to mention from the COVID intervention to the exmis, to the small and medium enterprises, to trader money, market women money, so many social 
programs that have put resources in the hands of Nigerians. Because, so uh, I mean, to, uh, Mr. To, uh, uh, and that's part of the... Yeah, I'll allow uh, Mr. Debo Olungaba to react to what he said, because a lot of people will say that 18 months, you are obviously passing the burden on to the next government that is coming in. Well, uh, well, well, I can tell you we are not, because certainly, like I said, there were considerations, and those things that would happen to even make things easier in terms of reduction. Why do we have subsidies? Why do we, have, uh, why do we import petroleum products? Because we, our refineries are not working. But if we do have the refineries working, shown, it means that the prices will come down, and therefore Nigerians will not have feel the effect, and it will be dictated by demand and supply. So the and question, even the, the production. The question is now that you raise yes. is that when you're talking about refineries, Correct. does the PDP can the PDP come to the public to speak about it? Because it's laid an allegation I mean, that yeah. under your government, thank you, the refineries were moribund. I, I see each time I come to this conversation, and I hear this weather beating excuses by the APC. So now I shudder. Now, and a bad workman complains about his tools, and a hopelessly irredeemable one complains about others. APC has been in government for close to eight years. Please give us a break. Nigerians didn't elect APC to give us excuses. And my brother, honorable, my honorable brother, uh, Yacoub, referenced a couple of policies. And again, I just wonder, who are we supposed to support? You mentioned pyramid. And the question is this. In the agri sector, if indeed there's abundance of rice as provided in those pyramids, the pyramid that there are conversation an allegation that actually there are wooden pyramids. It happened in 2018 in one of the southwest states where a pyramid of wood was created and rice was placed on it. It was in the public domain. We, do, we, we don't know what is now, but we saw a pyramid. It's actually very insulting to Nigerians to find that the federal government is placing pyramids in Abuja rather than in the areas where they are needed. In any event, in any event, if indeed that is an abundance of production of rice, then we should have seen a corresponding redu reduction in the prices. Today is an average of 30,000 in the market. Two, if indeed we have improved in our production of rice and food other food products, then that should reflect in the price and in the, the strength of our currency, which means we'll be importing less and means there will be less pressure on the exchange right. processes. So, just so if we look at everything, yeah. we, we, may not be, we may not have enough time to debate. We, we, we Again, have... in all the interventions you should talk about, the COVID-19 so-called palliative, we knew where it, it went. Right. They were busted in several warehouses all over the country. Again, this is something we should be happy about as a, as a country. We're due for, for a break in 60 seconds, but I want us to begin the conversation on the electoral bill before we go on that break. Just before we go on that break, the you, president, yeah. the president had said he will sign. Uh, we'll, we'll let our viewers uh, remind them of what the president said. Now it has been passed. Um, what should Nigerians be expected? I believe an assent from Mr. President. And this one for sure? Because he is a man that is to be trusted. He speaks what he means, what he believes. And he spoke to you, Sheun when you interviewed him, and he told you that should the National Assembly effect the necessary amendments, he would assent to the bill. All and right. the letter that he wrote, declining assent to the National Assembly, was very clear. And he are you, indicated are you, his reasons. Are you, are you in sync with the National Assembly? Because they've passed it, the letter transmitted to the National Assembly, from what it did today, is that in consonance with what the President wanted? Certainly. Be because he, what he pointed out in that letter was the need to give the parties the opportunities to have options, not just one 
form of primary elections. But for and some also, reasons, the president has introduced consensus into our law because he suggested it, it wasn't part of our laws. It was uh, just a silent, a quiet mode, but now it has been introduced officially. But I'll allow you, gentlemen, we'll wrap up on this uh, cons uh, issue of electoral bill when we return from this break. Just stay with me. Uh, we just have a few more minutes with Ms. Uh, Honorable Al Yaqub and Mr. Debo Olugunagba on some of the major decisions made by the federal government that is in the National Assembly and in the Executive. We we'll take a break, everyone, and we we'll wrap up on that conversation. Also, we will see Kasim Afegua and Shegun Shoumi, both of them members of the PDP, on the debate on the choice of the kind of candidate that should fly the flag of the PDP. Some of them are saying that they don't want old folks to fly their flag, and one of, some others have the, of the opinion that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is a competent. We get into that debate after our conversation with these two gentlemen right here with me. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, and welcome back to the program, everyone. Honorable Omar El Yaqub, the SSA to the President uh, on National Assembly Matter, Lee Sen, from the Executive to the National Assembly, and Mr. Debo Ologunagba, who is the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Both of them have been speaking with us on two major issues tonight fuel subsidy and the decision of the federal government to wait for another 18 months and the issue of the electoral bill. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Let's uh, conclude the conversation. You heard what Honorable El Yaqub said about about um, the issue of the electoral bill that the president is going to sign. Does that gladden your heart? Because I know your party came out when the president refused that said. No, I mean, we should step back what you about not just when he, when he didn't sign. We started the because we knew it was deployed by the APC to scuttle the most important provision of that amendment, which was the electronic transmission of results from the walls and the units. They never wanted that. And then they brought in some provision about direct primaries. And that's called it. Now, democracy is about how to choose government. And that's fundamental in any democracy, in any system. And what are the principles of that? It must be free, fair, credible, and transparent. And people should believe in it. And how do you do that? It is only when you know your vote counts when you cast a vote. And one of the provisions of the amendment to the Electoral Act is the, that provision, which of course the APC is uncomfortable because it, it won't allow for manipulation. So we raised the alarm initially. And you recall that the caucus of the PDP in the House of Representatives actually stayed a workout when that provision was introduced. However, because of the importance of this, I believe the National Assembly should have called short its vacation because it's the base of our democracy to call short that vacation to pass the amendment because it's just to remove just one provision. All right. So let me call the yeah, yeah, let, let, Because of our time, Honorable Yakub, you heard his position about the electoral. Is that a real reason that your government does not want uh, electronic transmission? Of course not, Sean. Did the letter of the president suggest anything like that? He would have written and said that these are the concerns that I have and mentioned the electronic transmission. I think the PDP is just looking for excuses for their lack of transparent elections in the last decade. And talking about that, uh, perhaps it's time to also mention the PIA that he's talking about, you know, framework. Since when has the PIA in the uh, works? Since 20 years, almost 20 years. All of PDP didn't have the courage and the will to have a, a framework that will govern our oil production and, and, and distribution in this country. So I think the PDP really doesn't have anything to say in terms of giving legal frameworks to uh, existing or new institutions of government. And certainly, even in the agricultural sector, Sean, please, how many people have you known that have gone back to the farms? since the, uh, the administration of President Buhari. How many meals do we have in this country? I can tell you, I don't, I have even lost count of the number of rice meals in Kano now and many other places. And rice is being produced, as he said, that we have pyramids in Abuja, because rice is universal, it's central to every, literally every state of this country produces rice. All right. So to, yeah. what I'm saying here and now is that we have always been for 
a, a framework that would ensure that we have a credible, transparent, and uh, an election in 2023 that Nigerians would believe or would accept right. as being credible and transparent. We need to go and now. that's what we have. I, I think the one way you will silence the opposition is when the president signs it. But, but, <laughs> but, there's but, no but, but let's that. wrap up now. We, we, just 30 seconds each for your final thoughts. We just, we just hope, 30 seconds your final Well, I, I hope for once, probably the APC would keep to its promise because they have never kept one. Since <laughs> 2015, this came with a promise to change. When they got in, they changed the promise. We hope the president will not wait for another 30 days to sign this amendment right. after this time. Well, I can, I, I can assure you the president is going to sign. And if anybody has not kept their promises, it's the PDP. And the PDP misrule for uh, almost one and a half decades, uh, over one and a half decades in this country. And let me also take this opportunity to remind my brother here that all their abundant projects, you can see infrastructural transformation in this country. Uh, since they had abandoned, they never thought could be done. Right. Are, are being implemented right. in this country. We need to go now. In terms of rail, yeah. roads, because we still uh, have some uh, other education and health infrastructure. Thank you so much, Honorable Show. Uh, Show. Uh, Thank you so <laughs> Thank much, you much to the President for, on National well, Assembly Matters and Mr. Deborah Ologunagba. Our former member, both of you served in the yes. National yes. Assembly. Yes. Uh, Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having us. I'll remind you, Nigerians, of what the President said when Channel Television had an exclusive interview with him on the issue of. Um, um, the mode of primaries and the electoral bill. Take a listen to him. And when we come back from listening to that, you get to meet my new set of panelists on the program. Mr. President, uh, should the National Assembly come back with the, the bill and they edit out what you don't like, would this is sign it? I don't think I told them what I don't like. All I said, there should be options. We must not insist that it has to be direct. It should be consensus and indirect. So if they do that, would you sign it? Yes, I will. I will sign. All I would like to, uh, is that there should be options. You can't tell, you can't dictate to people and you said you are doing democracy. Allow them, uh, you know, uh, other uh, options so that they can make a choice. much everyone let's now switch the conversation um, there's been this debate within the people's democratic party which generated a lot of controversies on the kind of kind or the kind of character that a party should put forward for the 2023 presidential election some have argued that age should be a major consideration while others disagree well the man who, who has caused this trouble is not the first time he's causing trouble um, in that uh, regard. Uh, I have two gentlemen here. Kasim Afegbua is the person I'm making reference to. He's a uh, member of the PDP, a chieftain of the PDP. And Shagun Shoumi, also a member of the PDP. Both of them are not on the same page. On a day like this, on this matter, <laughs> Kasim Afegbua is of the opinion that you don't want old folks as the flag bearer of your party. What exactly do you mean by that? I think you're getting it wrong. I said it would be immoral for the North to claim or to want to represent the PDP as candidate of the party. And at a time when a Northerner will be finishing eight years, that's one. What, when I added the issue of age, it was just a teaser or let me say, an enabler to that. I was specific about the aspiration of the man who represented the party in 2019 elections. I said, we are tired of seeing old faces from 1990 up till 2019, and Lahaji Atiku has been contesting for president. Is there anything and, wrong in that? No, there's nothing wrong, but for God's sake, the PDP must change its strategy. If, 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 if they want, in a plural society like Nigeria, what you need is to balance the equation. After eight years in the north, then you come down south. The two parties must, as a matter of necessity, for political stability, take their candidates from the south. Because if you don't balance these arts, 
with the kind of polarization we see in the country, chances are that there must be some kind of implosion. That Let me ask true. you a direct question. Yes. Do you have anything against Atiku Abubakar? Not at all. This is not a personal fight. For God's sake, no, but you I was specifically, a You mentioned his name specifically. Yes. That means you have something against his candidate or <laughs> candidate. <laughs> He shouldn't at this age. At seven, it will be 77 in 2023 when the elections will come. When, if per adventure he wins, he will be finishing his first term at 81. With the kind of experiences we have seen with a Buhari presidency that is almost like detained in, in the Aso Villa, not reaching out to Nigerians, the kind of polarization we have in the country, not connecting on no national conversations. I do not want to see old faces. I want a young, vibrant Nigeria who can connect the dots and go around the country right. to put to assuage the feelings of the people. This, this, we are going through very terrible times. And, this, and because we are in industries, we need to apply you know, a deliberate and conscious and sustained effort to ensure that we get the right minds to parallel the affairs of this country. But my underpinning mm -hmm. is the fact that Saudana must be president in you 2023. Are... You yeah, must, you put must. Yes. Must is, uh, because you don't have the power, the party I don't have the power, power. but allow Shabu and Shabu to. Yeah. They are Nigerians. Who are, but you're yes. a radical, I must say, because yes. you are the one who raised the voice against Uche Sekandus and it's led your party to that And, we have, and we have now, gotten so, a but, very but, solid but, leadership. But you are radically also moving against Atiku Abubakar. But let me allow Shabu Shomi to react to it. How would you react to what Kasim Afebua said? Kasim is my friend. I have great sadness that it seems like we have created a culture of not being able to consistently stay with an agenda for a while. And it becomes a little bit more explicit. If I haven't campaigned very vigorously like Kazim for Atiku Abubakar just about three years ago, being absolutely sure that he has the mental capacity and the health ability to do the job, I think that we cannot come now unless there's overwhelming evidence that he has become infamed, ill, or not so well to say we now are talking about the age question. But that aside, I have looked at this conversation deeply, and I have asked myself often, what does Nigeria need now? I looked at the zoning conversation, and I began to see some hypocrisy that must be discussed. We, discuss, we tend to discuss Nigeria as though there are three zones in the south and only one northern zone. Those who gave us the six zones gave us these zones so that no particular side can claim it's bigger or more important than the other. So we have six zones in Nigeria, three in the south and three in the north. In the southern zone of Nigeria, Granted, the Southeast has never produced precedent, and they must naturally be eligible to try. In the northern zone of Nigeria, the South, the Northeast, and the North Central have not produced precedent in this democracy. They must be given the opportunity and enabling to try. But I weigh everything even deeper on the issue of where is Nigeria now? What kind of skills do you need to run the country? I hold the view that you need someone who understands the country significantly and deeply. You need somebody who can get the job running based on the track record of an understanding of the complexities of how the presidential system works, especially in a democracy. And I began to feel pretty uncomfortable that we are interpreting a lowering of the age in the not to run, young to run bill by bringing it down to 35 to mean or to ignorantly assume that we have sealed it at the top. I have looked at many constitutions in the world. I haven't found a single constitution that has a top ceiling. Therefore, in democracy, all persons who feel that they have something to contribute have the passion and are born in must first of all not be bullied. They must be allowed to try their luck. When you begin to overemphasize age, you give the impression that you have found me some Obama or some Whiskey. 
And I have looked around to see what has been the actual conversation in the country. In 2019, a few young people were on the ballot. I didn't see a coalition of people going for them. I saw the Nigerian people looking for more than just age. And therefore, I am not against the young. I'm only saying politics will always be politics. You can't have Atiku Abaka on the field consulting and all that. Have Bola Tinubu on the field consulting and all that. And then sit in one corner. You have not taken their medical record. You have not tested that they have the same infirmity like the, former, the present president has. We have not found any evidence that things that affect the health of the young exclude the old, or what affects the old exclude the young. We have seen wet trees die while the dry ones are living for long. And then I ask myself, shall we now become a nation that has become stupidified in the most elementary of conversation as against who can get the job done? And in terms of the Southern argument, I, I cringe when I hear my Southern brothers talk. Because I would have expected that if, if they were so equitable, they ought to be saying, oh, the only place we want to pick a president from is the Southeast. Because you cannot come to the table with an argument that the Southwest has not produced president. Neither can you come to the table with an argument that the South has not. But in their hypocrisy, they pretend as if they cannot really point to the Southeast. Instead, they want to create an illusion that it doesn't matter which of the South gets it, so long as none of the North gets it. Whereas, we cannot find evidence that anybody in the Northeastern part has gotten it, All right. neither can we find anybody in the Northeastern part uh, getting yeah. it. Let me bring back Mr. Fegbo. How do you react to what he said? He's countered uh, everything. Uh, no, 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 no. I think uh, Show Me is trying to be clever by heart. How? You see, the point is this, Shame. It is only equitable. It's only fair. It's only, it only amount to justice, natural justice, that after eight years of President Buhari in the North, presidency should shift to the South. That's one. Two, the Aso Villa should not be a retirement home for the aged. I am praying to be old. At some point, I need to quit partisan politics. It's the same advice I gave to my boss, IBB, when he clocked 70. I wrote a speech for him. I said, you have to quit partisan politics. Anybody who comes to you, bless them. Because you need to be adding your voice, irrespective of political party, to the national conversation. And he obliged. We issued a statement, he read it at an event, and that was it. That is how to be a statesman. At 77, I don't see the kind of energy that anyone will have to be John Kenton about in a system that is predominantly dysfunctional. But he said that uh, uh, what he's bringing to the table. No, no he, there's, he nothing, spoke there's about... nothing anybody is bringing to the table. Forget all this narrative. I was a, a, a member of the uh, PDP presidential campaign uh, council in 2019. We campaigned vigorously to market our candidate, Elijah Tukovaka. After three years, you want me to still go back and be campaigning for Tukovaka as, as a candidate, as an aspirant? That should be like, like a motion without movement. What I'm saying is simple. See, on, 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 the, on, on the very strong point of natural justice, see this position to the south. Let the south, the south may decide to take, to take southeast. Fantastic. They have some brilliant minds and all of that. We, we can be south-south. It can be anybody. But to deny and come with the argument that in the north there are three zones, in the south there are three zones, we all know it is not south. All those zones are just the essential details. The point is, at 20, in 2023, I don't want Elijah Tukovaka to be a professional aspirant or a perpetual candidate in every election. He contested in 2011 with one party. He left when, when, he, when he was the vice president. He also ran under another party. He, he was in APC. He left APC. That we, we, we were both in PDP. He contested in 2019. That was the best outing. He, he put up a good effort. That we, we, we lost the election. He left us in the launch mm. right here in Nigeria and relocated to Dubai for two and a half years. No general will take his own troops to the, to, to, to the war front, and after the war, when the dust, has, you know, the dust of war has not simmered, then you, are, you abandon your troops, right? In, you're supposed to take your troops back to the barracks and reposition. 
Right. But he didn't do that. Because, I mean, it, 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 it will appear, right. you appear that you are you're sitting down as an individual and disqualifying someone I'm not under the law. Yeah, under the law, because it, it, at the end of the day, it won't be up to you Shum. to determine said, it to be the party. Said, but let me allow... Yeah. That's what I said. I said it should be immoral. Shum. I to offend you said natural you will justice. not want. So, yes, you, you I said personalize to offend it. natural justice. Okay, Shum. so let me allow Shegu Shegu to... But again, he has a right as a member of the party to... I have not told him not to. Hey, go ahead. I have only said, first of all, let me even go quickly to article went to Dubai. It is the height of political immaturity, meddlesomeness, and irresponsibility to imagine that you are going to be in politics four years round the clock, do nothing else, don't go to school, don't get a job, don't do anything, just sit on the same spot and be destabilizing the country, first point. <laughs> the second problem is that everybody should not be a professional politician without any other thing to do with his time. The third and most important point, Shewu, is this. A democratic leader understands that election ends once it ends. To stay in the country, energize young people to torpedo the country is not the way of someone who loves the country. Why did you go to Tabuna? Can you please wait? <laughs> a general, the Tabuna is legal. I didn't interrupt you, Kazim. Go ahead. A general has to understand when the war is won and lost. It is not, I marvel when people quote things they don't even understand the fundamental rudiment of it. A general does not stand in the battlefield when the war is over, screaming everybody go home. When the election ended, Everybody was meant to go back and do something else until it is time for another election. So that it's explains the reason. the reason why your principal exactly. went to Dubai he, for two and a no, half years. He went to Dubai, got another degree in new knowledge. He went to Dubai, reviewed what's going on in the world. Let me shock you something. <laughs> I asked Atiku sometimes today, I said, Your Excellency, this conversation on subsidy, tell me what do you see today? Because it appears as if it's neither here nor there. You know what he said? Only a brilliant mind can answer that without beating an eyelid. He said, Shagun, the whole business of removing subsidy must be done in stages. In our time, we had done two of the stages before my boss took over and we couldn't complete the remaining. We cannot burn money under a conversation that we all know Fested with mm. corruption. Now, the point I'm making to you is this. A leader has to come to the table with ideas. The presidency of Nigeria is not a kindergarten so, for children to learn. That's number Mr. one. Shalomi, number that's, two, that's right on. Number two, one more point. The presidency of Nigeria is not a stone quarry where men are expected to be using their hands to break stones. The responsibility of a leader is to lead not junket about and play to so the gallery. I, I'd like to ask you quickly. Yes, thank you. Your principal article is in the race. You see? No, 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 no. I mean, because, of, because of time. Declaration. Is he in the race? He is, is in the race. Have intention? He is in the race. All right, just. And he's in the race to win it. All right. Because all of the issues that we talked about in 2019 are exactly the all same. Right. Let works. me bring back. Ask I, him who is his candidate. Mr. Febua. I mean, how do you then react to those who, when I heard and read some of your position, they say quickly, they said, look, you have been compromised and uh, you have been bought over by perhaps a South-South candidate who is running the race. How do you I, react to that? I expect, because I, this, I, I expect, this agitation, I hear, that's, I expect, what, that's I, what came, I expect, came with it. I expect to hear all manners of narrative, you know, or insults hurl at me and all of that. They don't bother me. I'm driven by my conviction and my sense of honesty and speaking truth to power. I like to interrogate processes, not just swallow hook line and sink out what I hear. Even the response he said that his principal gave on the subsidy is not a response that Are shows you for real? capacity. Really? Let, let me tell you, let me tell you. Explain subsidy, your... when you say subsidy, as a country, yes. eh, you are saying... It, it said they have done two stages and the other one festered with corruption. The only reason why we are discussing subsidy is because there is no system in place. You have to emplace a system that will checkmate corrupt practices and sub practices of the aim of, 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 of the We, of we the need to close now, gentlemen, so, because see, we are totally say, out of time. Just me, a moment, just me, a moment. <laughs> the question I like, who are you supporting in your party? Supporting? I'm supporting any southern aspirant. 
that to go through the process because in 2019 all aspirants in PDP were not. So part of so the rumor is correct that you are supporting someone from south, the south. No, south, south, south. Okay. Yeah, that's out. Because Ibo, in your party, Ibo, that is Ibo, what is yeah. going on. Yeah. So let, let's conclude this conversation, yeah, gentlemen. What's your final word? My final word is that subsidy removal is not a solution. What you should do is put the system We're in not place. discussing that. Yes, yeah. I know. So the point I, you're no. making, the yes. point you're making yes. is about the I want candidate to finish of the, the flag bearer. Yes. My point is, my final conclusion is that, for God's sake, we are tired of seeing these old faces particularly faces that have featured prominently in our political process, still seeking to preside over us. The Aso Villa is not a retirement home for the aged. I pray to be old, I God grant them good health. Please, they should sit back, All watch right. us from the back, and give us guidance. You have 30 seconds, Mr. Osho. We need to Democracy please. does not work on the principle of bullying anyone who has an intention. The rules are clear. Every person above the age of 35 who thinks he has something to bring to table is eligible to contest the decision of who will lead right. is purely with the Nigerian people. And I recommend that article to them very vehemently. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Shegun Shawumi, a member of the PDP, and Kasim Afegua, interestingly, both of them worked on the same table for Atiku Abubakar in 2019. But yet now you're not agreeing on that point. But that's how we close the show tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye for now.